All warmed up, all warmed up. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. I got a lot to get through here this week and not a lot of time to do it. Great to be back uh, at my home. Like I said, I've been working long weeks and oh, God, oh, God, life on the road, life on the road, everybody. Some people just weren't cut out for life on the road. Uh, so we got, uh, what do we got going on here? Uh, it's uh, 10, 10 a.m. here on the best coast. NFL action has been kicking off, and we've got uh, you know not a lot of great games here on this early morning slate. Seahawks, Panthers, gross. Um, the Panthers, man, they're they are the new Titans. They are the new Tennessee Titans when it comes to teams that are boring as hell. Because the Titans, for whatever reason, I gotta I gotta hold. Um, I might end up you know back you know backtracking on this, but they are they're fun to watch. <laughs> with Ryan Tannehill at QB, uh, they actually are. Uh, we got the, what we got going on. Eagles, Redskins. Eagles better fucking win that game. You better win that game, Philly. Uh, Broncos, the Chiefs. Let's see. Texans, Titans, Packers. Uh, we got the Patriots. Hey, they're up early, seven nothing on the Bengals. <laughs> Looks like that camera work paid off. Uh, Bill Belichick. He knew nothing about that. Okay, everybody. He knew nothing about that. All right, it's, uh, it's all bullshit. It's bullshit, people. Um, so we'll, we'll keep. Tra- I'll keep track of those as I go along here. We'll hit up some other NFL storylines uh, as as I get to that segment. We'll start with college football. We had. Oh, I guess we had uh, old forty five, old forty five chromosomer out at the uh, Army Navy game, and he was out there. You know what I didn't realize? Uh, apparently, uh, Trump has a, a kid that's like uh, a bit of a. You know, bit of a bit of a slow one. Uh, this Baron, this Baron is apparently a bit of a tard. Um, so there you go, there you go. I just bullied him the <laughs> same way uh, that he bullies that, uh, that autistic uh, environmental girl. Um, what's her name? Greta Thunberg, Person of the Year. Who'd have thought? Who'd have thought? Right? Uh, go Sweden. Is she Swedish? I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm too ignorant to look it up. Let's get back onto this. We got college football to talk about, but anyhow, he was out at uh, at the old Army Navy game. Go Navy! I was a former Marine Corps uh, personnel. I always have to root for Navy in that game. We're Department of the Navy, the Men's Department. That's what I say to all those old guys I come across on uh, my line of work. Oh, you're in the Navy? Yeah, me too. Yeah, I was in the Marine Corps, Men's Department. Yeah, <laughs> I tell you what, you all said begin, and then you go from there. <laughs> It's crazy how uh, how kind of uh, repetitive and, and, and predictable those conversations are with those people. Uh, let's go. Uh, we got our playoff is set. Clemson against Ohio State. We got uh, LSU. And Joe Burrow, the Heisman Trophy winner. Congratulations, Joe Burrow. Uh, Jalen Hurts, always the bridesmaid, never the bride. Second, uh, second place. Uh, second place in the hearts of Bama fans and second place in the hearts of Heisman voters. And then we've got uh, LSU. They're going to take on uh, Oklahoma. I read, read a big uh, Lincoln Riley piece on uh, ESPN, and it did nothing to convince me that uh, Oklahoma stands a chance against LSU. Clemson, I, got, I like them against the Buckeyes, and I like uh, I like the Tigers. Tigers, 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 Tigers. Uh, that's going to be the final. And if you're asking me who wins it, which you're not, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to say uh, it's Clemson again, baby. Back to back. Trevor Lawrence is the best quarterback in that in in the Final Four. Let no let there be no mistakes about that. It's not even close. It's not even close as to who has the best quarterback. It's Clemson. They got the best quarterback. Check. They probably got the best coach. I think they do. I'll take Dabo over who who else is it? Ryan Day? Mm-hmm, I don't know. That guy's face is really red. I don't know if it's because he's a day drinker or what it is. Rosacea, but a really red face. You got Lincoln Riley. And then who's our other? Oh, and then you got Ed Ogeron. I'll take I'll take Dabo over Ed. Yes, sir. I love Ed Ogeron. Uh, everyone loves Ed Ogeron. But I'll take Dabo over him. So they got the best quarterback. And they got the best coach. That's why I like Clemson. Tiger Woods, baby. Tiger's back. He's back back. He's double back. 
He's more back than Texas is every fucking August. That's how back Tiger is. As president player of the, of the uh, uh, what is that, President's Cup? Excuse me, captain player. I think I said president player. He 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 would be an upgrade uh, in in the role in as an as an Oval Office. Uh, you know, he be a tiger, <laughs> tiger. Come on, man. You know, let's go. But anyhow, uh, he was the captain of the Presidents Cup. Went three and zero on the playing field. Got wasted on the bus. There's a great video of them singing "We Are the Champions" on the bus. Tigers wasted. He's got a fat lipper in, and he's loving life. Hell of a bus ride. And uh, thank you, Tiger, for yet another great moment. I didn't watch any of it, not a single stroke. But I'm ready to see you at Augusta again. I still have that on my... There are two things on my DVR right now that I have not deleted for the entire year 2019. Two things are... Luckily, Comcast didn't fuck me over this time. And I got a, The last DVR I had had maybe... T- fucking 12 to 14 hours of storage on it it was atrocious it was atrocious you had more storage on your iphone you know back in 2007 than i had on that thing it was terrible but now my new one i don't know what's on there i mean i can do i I, there's a lot of shit that gets piled up and and it seems like it's only half full and maybe 100 to 200 hours it's a lot of fucking shit you're never going to watch again that you can leave on there so there's two things I've left on there. Thing number one, when Tiger won the Masters last year, every now and then you got to just put on Tiger walking down 18, that crowd swelling, and relive that moment. Thank you for that, Tiger. That was magic. It was beautiful. It's what sports are all about. That and bad sportsmanship. But anyhow, the other thing, of course, is uh, Joey Chestnut's <laughs> hot dog eating contest. Every now and then, you got to see a guy eat 70 hot dogs in 12 minutes as well to remind you of what the human body is capable of and that it's really you and your own mentality that's holding you back, all right? If that guy can fucking eat 70 hot dogs in 12 minutes, well, you can do whatever you're thinking about doing. You can do it. You can get it done. All right. Let's see here. It's NFL. Let's double back on the NFL. Uh, I want to talk about Janoris Jenkins, former cornerback of the New York Giants. So he's on waivers right now. He was waived because he called the fan a retard. That's what he, he, a fan got into a beef with him on Twitter and he's like, you're a retard. Shut up. (laughs) And then he got cut. Now I'll tell you what. If Tom Brady did that, he would not get cut. You got to imagine this is one of, and it's not the first time that Janoris Jenkins has done that. If people are acting like it's a big deal, and granted, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a good word. It's not a word you'd want to put on a T-shirt and then go walking around Disneyland. That'd be inappropriate. Don't do that. But how inappropriate is the word? Well. I was reading about this on ESPN and they wrote the word, you know, in the article. So that, you know, they say, you know, Janoris Jenkins called a fan a quote retard, end quote, and then they go on with the article. Right? Is if some white dude used the N word, they wouldn't say that. They they'd put N star 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 quote quote whatever it is. They wouldn't put that in there like it's some Mark Twain publish, you know, publication from the 1870s. They wouldn't just throw it on print. So it's really not that big of a deal. And he got cut. As a, as a final result of that, now, is it a good thing? No. I, I'm one to, to take ownership of the English language whenever reasonable. And let's not, let's not take words out of our out of our language because there are a few people that may may get hurt by them you just can't do that you can't do that you do not use those words of hurt in the, in the right, appropriate situation like do you want to go to an lbgtq you know conference you know Fucking wedge your F-150 in between all the Subaru Foresters and the Outback in the parking lot and then walk in 
get up on stage and, and start calling people queers. No, they don't do that. Don't do that. That's bad. That's bad. You're doing that to fucking get at people and to hurt people. But if your friend is being a retard and you want to call him out on it, it's okay to do that. It's just you and it's just you and him. You can call him out on that and not be a hate monger. Like you're not you're not saying, "Oh, we need to put all these If you call your buddy, if your buddy puts a pizza in the oven and then turns the oven up to 400 degrees and the cardboard box is still in there and he meant to warm it, but he put it to 400 and is smoking the whole house out and you say, "Jimmy, you fucking retard. What were you doing, man? You're not a hate monger." You're not. You can feel you can feel confident in yourself that you're not. I'm going to give you reassurances there. Okay? But if you walk into a school and you go to the special ed department and you start throwing that word around, then at the at best you're you're a douchebag. Right? <laughs> at best. At very best. All right, but Janoris Jenkins, he's going he's trying to get on with the contender. He's not trying to deal with any of these fucking 2 and 12 retards. He's trying to get in there. With a contender, get paid, and uh, you know, make a run to the Super Bowl. Now, thinking of, and speaking of people that Janoris Jenkins would probably call bad names, uh, radio. So, radio. You wouldn't call radio that word. Like if Janoris Jenkins called radio a retard, then Janoris Jenkins is a monster. But if he calls some idiot fan from North Jersey one, well, as a former resident of North Jersey, I can confirm there's a large number of those people roaming around out there that deserve that label, okay? So I'm not going to hold that against Janoris, but Janoris would probably hate on this guy too. Radio, the guy, the real guy, not Cuba Gooding Jr., but the other guy, the guy who's based off of him, yeah, he's dead. So I just want to throw that out there for all you who enjoy that Cuba Gooding Jr. classic movie. For the next time you watch that, watch it with the uh, the proper reverence because that, that guy's passed on. All right, let's talk NBA. I don't have a lot of NBA news, and here's why. I gather most of my NBA news from the front page of the ESPN website because that's how the preparation for this podcast occurs. And there wasn't any NBA news on it. The only news basketball-related... On any level, college, professional, high school. I got what we're talking about. High school? Why would you even bring that in there? Because the only fucking thing on there was how Bronny, Bronny, which is LeBron James's kid, how he hit some clutch free throws to win a fucking high school basketball game while LeBron James washed with his weave glued to his head from courtside. All right, that was the whole, that's all I got for you. Yeah, maybe Giannis is up to something. Maybe Lucas, I heard Lucas Hart, he has got a sprain. You're not going to find out about it, though, because all ESPN wants to put in our ears and our eyeballs is that, uh, you know, Bronny's hitting clutch free throws. He doesn't even look that good. Can I be real? Like, he looks decent. He looks like a good high school basketball player. But I'm not trying to trade up in the draft and select him number one. What is he, fucking 6'3", 6'2"? He ain't Russell Westbrook. Get the fuck out of here. And even if he were Russell Westbrook, I don't think I would want him. Like, come on, man. Get the fuck out of here. All right. Let's talk. Uh, I was going to talk NFL playoff picture, but uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm on, a, I'm on a time crunch here. This is going to be a condensed version of the podcast. Uh, now, I got to get into I got to get into some us weekly stuff. That's next. That's what's coming. Hold up. Got to refresh here. Let's give an NFL update. All oh, Pats Bengals 7-7 seven, seven, halfway through the first. Uh, I only had the off they only filled the uh, they only filmed the offensive crew uh, before they were escorted out by NFL security. Chiefs are up 6 nothing. Other than that, Scott Hansen Born, born things going on there on the Red Zone channel. Let's get it going. Oh, line's got a touchdown. Jameis. He'll get you one. He'll give him two. But I, God damn it, I love him for it. Love me some famous Jameis. Oh, and the Eagles. You got a field goal. It's clutch. 
It's a clutch field goal. If Nick Foles was playing, the Eagles would be up by, I don't know, 20, 25 by now. What a travesty. It's kind of, that whole relationship was kind of just, what would be, you know, if you saw, uh, it was an iconic TV couple. You know, you see your your favorite, your Pam and Jim. Actually, I mean, Jim, he had been better off with Karen. Uh, she was solid. Very solid. Uh, and, uh, yeah, all right, let's go. That dangers of a one-man show. Standing by her man, Us Weekly, from the future, December 16th, 2019. So disgraced. Divorced for 23 years, but still disgraced. Prince Andrew's number one supporter. That's Duchess Fergie. I don't like the look of either of these people. Either. They both look evil. They're definite. She, I mean, she's definitely the sort of lady that is covering up the crimes of a child rapist. That's what. Draw a picture of what one would look like. That's her. Justin Chimber- Timberlake, he's going to address the cheating rumors in here. Katie and Orlando, their wedding's on hold. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. All right. Trying to sell me some Chevys. Dun, dun, dun. I don't think so. Who wore it best? Well, this is a, a ridiculous, gigantic red dress. Congratulations. I, know, I haven't heard of three of these people. Eliza Cummings, sorry for you, 10%. America hates you. Becky G, 20%. Uh, never heard of you. Sophia Carlson, the winner, at 38%. Never heard of her. Kendall Jenner, I heard of her. 32%. 32%. Dang, she lost, huh? Jenner's The Jenner's lost? She looks like her mother's, though. <laughs> looks like her mother's. Uh, maybe a bit bit too much Bruce to, to overcome Sophia Carlson. But looks good nonetheless. Yeah, what do we got here? Oh, a pink one. Gwyneth Paltrow. She wins this one. She's she's one of those people that was trying to sell like like stars to somebody or really, really crazy stuff going on. Bad person that Gwyneth Paltrow. Um, good wife. Uh, good wife in Marvel uh, Marvel movie form. What else we got here? Oh, the Pussycat Dolls. Here we go. The Pussycat Dolls. Jessica, Kimberly, Nicole, Ashley, Carmet. Reunite and perform for the first time in almost 10 years on X Factor Celebrity. And I'll tell you what. Like When I'm looking at this picture right here. This is the greatest night of at least three of those women's lives <laughs> based on the look of their face. And probably four, and then the one in the middle is a little bit. So Nicole Scherzinger, she had a somewhat of a career at, at a certain point in time. She made it she made it out of the Pussycat Dolls. Like she made it out of the hood. And now she's back. Like, now she's back at Grandma's house, living there, singing with Jessica Kimberly, Ashley, and Carmet. Jessica, she looks like she's had some problems with drugs in the last decade. I'm not going to lie. Kimberly, probably a mom. Looks like a mom. She looks like she'd fucking tear your ass up at Starbucks <laughs> if, you, if you wrote her name on the cup wrong or got the mocha twist incorrect. She'd fuck your ass up. And then two on the right, they just look happy to be there. Very happy to be there. You know afterwards, they're all walking backstage. Jessica, she's got some money problems. They, I bet most of them have money problems. Of one, We've all got money problems, right? I, oh my God, that was amazing! We need to do a reunion tour. <laughs> we need to do a reunion tour. And then... You, but the, here's the thing, though. Here's the thing, though. You don't. <laughs> you don't in any way need to do a reunion tour. And for those of you that were worried about it, uh, Taylor Swift got to sing Shake It Off uh, at the Grammys. It happened, according to something going on in here. 
Um, she gotta do it. Hey, there's Reese Witherspoon dodging her taxes again. Oh, stars, they're just like us. They shop for housewares with their stolen tax money. Don't you, Reese? They eat hot dogs. That's Kendall Jenner yet again. <laughs> she's a whole plate of hot dogs. She's not eating a whole plate of hot dogs. Who's giving, is someone just giving her a whole plate of hot dogs? And she's there like, here, take a bite of a hot dog. I'm going to take a picture of you with this. And then somebody walks away. Like, that's how that goes, right? Those are all plants. Why do, like, do you imagine living your life and you're like, all right, we got to get Jerry, you know, get Jerry to walk over there and fucking take a picture of me eating a hot dog. Why? Us, we can get an Us Weekly. And some idiot in his basement can <laughs> talk shit about us. All right, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. Let's go. It's worth the money. Oh, love lives the couple since 2015. See each other as soulmates and best friends. Well, then why hasn't Blake Shelton proposed yet? Apparently, uh, Blake Shelton is popping the question to Gwen Stefani any day now. At least that's what the voices Rose Short tells us. We'll see. We'll see, bitch. We'll fucking see. Come on, Blake. Do the right thing. Do the right thing. All right. Justin Timberlake. So I finally saw these pictures, these incriminating pictures of him. So in October, Justin Timberlake made it very clear that Jessica Biel was his lady. All right. But now Timberlake, he was spotted with this Palmer co-star, Alicia Wainwright, at a bar in New Orleans. And the picture there, I mean, they're sitting at a bar. The whole wedding ring thing, he doesn't have his wedding ring thing. That's one thing. I mean, he's an actor. He's got that coming on and off for filming scenes. That could, you know, there's any number of things that could go into that. But this lady is sitting with her fucking hand on his knee. Like on the inside of his knee. Like uh, palm, palm toward the, you know, the thigh area. I'll tell you what, man. That's a tough spot. I would not want to be in a room with Mrs. Fever and that picture of me, right? Lucy, you got some explaining to do. He may be able to explain that to us weekly, which he does. Justin and Alicia are just friends, says the source. Nothing remotely romantic is going on. In fact, Wainwright has been dating an actor who lives in L.A. Yeah, Justin Timberlake. <laughs> Fucking Justin Timberlake. Um... Timberlake, for his part, is, is a dedicated husband to Beale, 37, and father to their son, Silas, 4. When he's not working, he's 100% dad. You know, I don't know about that. I don't know Justin Timberlake, but I know a lot of people, a lot of dudes with fucking young-ass kids that are still stepping out on their wives. So, I don't think, I don't think you could fall back on that and say... I'll tell you what, man. I've been serving the good Lord for decades, and I don't appreciate being accused of embezzlement. <laughs> you know, just because you say you've been serving the good Lord from your private jet, it doesn't really, it doesn't mean a whole lot to me. It doesn't. All right. And you can say that you love being dad, but when you're out there at the bar with some lady's hand on your crotch, well, you know, I don't know if I believe you. Maybe Jessica Biel does, and that's between the two of you. All right, I can, I do can wait another stalled proposal. Katy Perry and Orlando Bloom. I know who these two people are, and that's why I'm talking about them. Aren't heading down the aisle yet. They were set to tie the knot this month, but it's been postponed. Change the timing due to the location that they want. And everything's going, still going smooth. I don't know, man. No one really fucking cancels a wedding if shit's going smooth. Like, I'll tell you what, you know, I thought I wanted Tahiti. I thought I wanted Tahiti, but it turns out I actually want Barbados. So we got to change this whole thing. And I don't know. Or maybe Orlando Bloom, 42, is looking at Katy Perry, 35, and saying to himself, Ooh, man, I've been hanging out with Cara Delevingne, who's 22. She's a lesbian, so it's not like, you know, they're going to the hook up. But he's like, I actually found out that I'm more of a fan of uh, 22-year-olds than I am of uh, washed-up 35-year-old pop singers. 
So I'm having some second thoughts. Well, I'm telling you, pretty soon we're going to have a picture of fucking Orlando Bloom and his four-year-old, you know, talking about his four-year-old kid. Some lady grabbing his crotch at a bar. All right. Here's the meat and potatoes. Fergie. For those of you who don't know who Fergie is, Prince Andrew's ex-wife, Sarah Ferguson, has enough intel to take down the crown. So she's apparently like the crown's own personal Jeffrey Epstein. She's got all the dirt on what's going down. And that makes sense, right? She was married to the fucking, like, the pedophile. She probably knows more than the queen about all the dirt that's going down there. But here's what's going to happen, though. She's getting forced out. They're like, hey there, lady. This is what this is the only part of this is it's interesting to me. So now we got... So we got the royal son, all right, who's been fucking diddling chicks for however long he's been doing it, hanging out and consorting with rapists and pedophiles, and most likely 100% participating in the like and the sort of their crimes and activities. Now he's got this wife, ex-wife, who's been taken care of because he's got that royal cash. He's like, yo, Fergie, here's your hush money. Shut the fuck up. All right. Here's this. <coughs> here's this. Almost died there. I'm alive, though. I made it. Unlike, presumably, some of Andrew's victims. Now, here's your hush money. Keep your mouth shut. Do your thing. Buy your Louis Vuittons. And let's just let's move on. Let's forget about what you've seen, what you've done. But now the money's going to dry up, right? At a certain point in time, his money's going to dry up. And his money to her is going to dry up. And then what? I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. If I'm Fergie, I'm cashing the fuck in. I'm going to write me a book. I'm going to write me a book. And I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to sell this book to somebody. And I'm going to ask a publisher if they want to buy it and how much they want to buy it for. And I'll offer to sell it to the queen, too. Who wants to buy it? You or these publishers? And that's it. I'm going to cash in. Is that bribery? Have, has what I dis- have what I just described. Is that bribery? Feels like it is. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, I'm sure in a way it is. But if you're... But it, I don't think it is. It's like, hey, uh, we're going to have a bidding process for your dirty secrets. Uh, whoever bids the most gets it. Fuck, I mean, at a certain point in time, you would have to think that, that maybe the queen wouldn't even get it. What, 20, 30, 40 million dollars? I mean, they're, they're fucking, there's this magazine, they're in this goddamn magazine every week. So, I mean, they're churning out, Us Weekly's using them to churn shit out. Imagine if you had all of Fergie's shit, and you just, maybe you didn't even put it out in a book form, you just piecemealed it out in giant bombs crushing fools i don't know how much is that worth it's a dangerous game these people are playing like when when here's when you're paying people money to keep their mouth shut and here's what you got to keep doing you got to fucking keep paying them money or you got to shut their mouth permanently and that's what you got to understand if you're somebody who's being paid to keep your mouth shut right one day the money's going to dry up and how you react to that is very important. <laughs> it really is. Oh, give me my money or I'm going to do this or that. Oh, okay. And then you end up in the bottom of the fucking East River. That's how that goes. Because sometimes the money just ain't going to be there anymore. But Fergie, Fergie's got a lot of leverage. And if I'm her, I've already got, I've already got a few, I've already gone through a few drafts of this thing. And, uh, I'm going to make sure I'm taken care of because if they're not going to look out for me, who's going to look out for me? I got to look out for me. And the last thing here, people looking out for other people. Take me to church. Hollywood's feeling spiritual. Follow us inside the houses of worship the stars call home. I didn't know this, but apparently like that Joel Osteen game, 
these Hollywood people are trying to get in on that Joel Osteen game because this reeks of of that sort of fleecing people nonsense. I don't know how it takes though because part of that that Joel Osteen crowd is not the Kanye crowd. So anyhow, Sunday service. What is it? It's Kanye West, non denominational, roving pop up, follows the traditions of black churches with a focus on music and occasional prayer. <laughs> so show me the money. West brings his entrepreneurial spirit to the service, selling $195 sweatpants and other merch, all available on his website. So this is Kanye's church. It sounds more like a little uh, like pop-up concert thing, right? Um, so he's doing that, and uh, apparently you can go, but you have to sign an NDA to go. So it sounds like Kanye's up there just shimmying around plays gold digger and then uh, you buy some Yeezy sweatpants a visor throw some money in the dumb did not was that the uh was that those little tray things throw some money in the the little trays the donation trays and then uh pop on out of there terrible you got one named Vu Vu is a pop culture church uh founded in Miami by pastor Right, Richard Wilkinson. I want. I might think about ordaining myself as a pastor at some point. You can do that on the internet. I think in less than a half an hour. Uh, pastor Bobby Fever, I'm here to help you, my son. All right. So he he's the guy who performed Kim and Kanye's um, wedding ceremony. So this seems what this seems to me is like that this Richard Wilkinson guy was like has been running this game since 2015. And that Kim and Kanye were going there. And then Kanye saw the money he was making and then said, Oh, fuck. I got, I got to give me some of that, man. I'm going to do what you do, but also sell Yeezys, which is pretty sick. And then we got three more here. Hillsong. This is apparently like uh, one of the uh, one of the original ones. So the OG Celeb Attracting Megachurch, founded by Brian and Bobby Houston. But its public face is high-profile tattooed Pastor Carl Lentz. The Pentecostal Christian Church has locations across the globe. In 2018, the church's revenue is $103 million. That's pretty good. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty good. Like, here's the deal. When your revenue is $103 million and you provide no public service or no product, the margins are pretty fucking sweet. Pretty fucking sweet. Well, how does your business work? Let's imagine religion is a business, if you would. Uh, what do you sell people? Oh, we, we give them nothing tangible. Uh, we don't produce anything. Uh, we don't provide any reasonable services. Uh, we, we simply are a place for them to uh, congregate, uh, facilitate the uh, removal of money from their pocket, and then we push them back out into the world get more money for us that's essentially how our business works oh you know give them like uh oh well you know we got kool-aid every now and then for sure uh for sure uh rice crispy treats are pretty sick in the summertime uh if you come to vacation bible study and it's on a log for everybody so it's not like we do nothing but we're kind of centered on around doing nothing right and then here's what we do. And then we're like, all right, well, we're going to help other people, right? So we take like a little bit of this money and then we give it away, all right? We don't write it. We're not able to write it off in taxes because we don't pay any taxes. <laughs> so, I mean, that sucks, right? We can't know write-offs. But not paying any taxes is also very sweet. And, you know, this is basically how the business works. It's a pretty solid business, Um Low risk. Uh, you own a lot of good real estate. Uh, you don't have to pay any taxes on your real estate holdings either, which is tremendous. I'll uh, praise Christ for that. And it's good. It's very, very good. Uh, so I think anyone with a little bit of acumen can look at that situation and say, hmm, well, I have followers. Well, if I convert, even if you if you have uh, you know, 20 million Instagram followers, you know, what's their monetary value to you? Is it one dollar per year? That's pretty sick. I mean, that's pretty sick, right? I mean, that is that is really good. 
All right, twenty million a year. Boom. And then let's imagine you're not Reese Witherspoon. You're actually going to pay your taxes on that. And yeah, yeah, it's ten million dollars in your pocket. Okay. Well, what if you're what if your church? What if instead of being Kanye, you're the Sunday Service Church? And those 20 million Instagram followers, you're able to convert, what is that, 1%, one, one percent, one tenth of 1%. You're able to convert 200,000 of them into fucking, you know, followers, you know, into people. But now they're religious people. So now you really got your fucking hooks in them. They got their Yeezys. <laughs> they got their coming to church. They got their Yeezys. And they're fucking getting off leased out. And you're getting after it. But now instead of having 20 million Instagram followers that are worth a dollar a year, you got 200,000 that are worth what? Thousand bucks a year? Fuck. Now we're talking. Now we're talking cash. And that's why Creed Bratton said it best. Cults. More fun as a follower. Much more profitable as a leader. All right, everybody, I got to get out of here. You have a good week, and I'll be back. Uh, Merry Christmas and all that sort of stuff. We got one more before the good Lord is born.